that, it's just easier to show you. Um, what we're gonna do now is map threats and vulnerabilities to Annex A, controls, these are low level controls, prescriptive controls, up to Annex A, and then compliance to Annex A, okay? And then we can look at it from, and what this really allows us to do is kind of look at things three-dimensionally. It's hard to do in an Excel worksheet, so that's why I'm gonna show you here. Um, so one of the things we can do is, now this is, I just wanna clarify here, there's a lot of ways to do risk assessment. We use an asset-based approach for SecureStar. So um, that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, so let's look at a few here. Uh, and I'll show you kind of how we connect the dots here. So we have a server, so we have hardware. Servers is a subcategory of hardware. Then we have a threat and vulnerability. And then what we, we actually map ours to CIA here, if that matters to anybody, uh, because our job is to uh, preserve CIA. And then we use the CIA when we do our risk assessment and then we plop it into the statement of applicability, which tells us, gives us justification for why we chose a control. Um, Okay, we map this threat and vulnerability to Annex A here, and what happens then is that we can, if we've mapped the low-level controls to Annex A, we can now see uh, what controls might reduce this threat and vulnerability. Okay, so let's look at one here that might have a few more in it. There we go. So, for this threat and vulnerability now, it's gonna bring up three controls that all map to Annex A. So this is one of the ways we're gonna connect the dots. So think about if we were in the risk assessment right now and we said this is the threat and vulnerability to servers, then we'd have three options here. And if we selected these three options, it would, it would plop into a policy or process or procedure, but it would also map to that Annex A, back to that Annex A. And now once we selected this in the risk assessment, we can now attach it to any GRC requirement that's mapped to these same Annex A controls. Does that make sense? So if I go back here, and I'll show you what I mean, um, I can now say that this threat and vulnerability is related, possibly now, this is only 100% true, um, but is also related to these compliance requirements. Okay, and what it's gonna do is, if I were to select those three controls, it would also plop those three controls into each one of these GRC requirements here. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a couple different directions of this, but this is just the threats and vulnerabilities look. Okay, and you can see here that those three controls I just showed you reduce that, those, that threat and vulnerability possibly, but also may reduce these GRC requirements. Okay, and so you can see here that we've mapped all of these to an, the same Annex A controls. Okay, so let's look at a different view of this from controls. Well, let's look at a sample policy here. Access control, we'll use one like password management. And now we can look at a specific control here from another, this is again a three-dimensional. So let's look at this control right here. It maps to 9.4.3, okay? And what we can do then from a GRC perspective is say, if we select this control, and this control maps to 9.4.3, what compliance requirements would it reduce? Okay. Now again, I just wanna say that it's not 100% true because Annex A is just our middleman. But what it does is it connects the dots. If, if anybody here is familiar with Archer or LockPath and some of those other tools, instead of using Annex A in those tools, they use the unified control framework, okay? Because this is an ISO 27001 perspective, we have to map to Annex A. So we just use Annex A as our middleman instead of the unified control framework, okay? That some other ones use. Okay. So. What we're saying now is this control maps to uh, that Annex A requirement and that Annex A requirement uh, maps to the lowest level of these GRC requirements and you can see here cloud security, COBIT, here's the GDPR, FedRAMP, low, medium, FISMA, NIST, SANS, uh, SOC 2, SOC 3, P PCI, so on and so forth. So what happens is if we actually select that control, if we attach that control in the risk assessment, what the risk assessment's really doing, everybody, is it's, co it's connecting a control to a threat and vulnerability of why you have it, right? Because in the ISO world, really, there's no such thing as a control without risk. It's not a best practice kind of thing. So what we're doing through that planning phase is we're saying, here's our scope, here's our assets within the scope, and what are our threats and 
threats and vulnerabilities to those assets now. And then by, by connecting that to controls, we now have a justification for those controls, especially when we can map it back to CIA, threats and vulnerabilities back to CIA. Okay, so you can see here, that's uh, one option. And now let's look at it from another perspective here. So that's kind of the, from the control perspective, you know, looking at compliance and threats. Let's look at it from a compliance perspective. We can do it just the opposite way. So we can do legal regulatory, let's use something like FISMA, access control. So let's just go to Annex A. Let's look at it from Annex A's perspective. Let's go to access control, user access management. Uh, let's look at the lowest level of 9.2.3, which is management of privilege access rights. We can now say, here's all the low level controls that map to that, okay? You can see here, they might be all over the board. Some are in network security, some are in access control, some are in system security, okay? Those all map to the same 8.9.3. What this means is, is that these are all of our options to meet any threat and vulnerability that maps to 9.2.3, and then of course any GRC requirement that maps to 9.2.3. So that's how we do that. And then we can also look at compliance here. So we can say 9.2.3, here's all the compliance that maps to that. And again, we can go all over the board here. And there's quite a few that map to this. And then the last thing we can do here is, again, three-dimensionally, is look at all the threats and vulnerabilities that are mapped to 9.2.3. Okay, and that's how we connect the dots. Once we go through the risk assessment process, I, so what this is gonna do now, as soon as we select these, any of these that are mapped to now 8.11.2.1, once we close this out, it's actually gonna map these then to any GRC requirement. So we're, 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 we're taking these from the actual risk assessment, saying these are current controls they all map to 8.11.2.1, and then any GRC requirement that maps to 8.11.2.1, these controls will now just populate that, okay? And again, you could do this in an Excel worksheet. It just gets a little bit more difficult to do it. So what this is gonna do now is have the 104, because we use Annex A as our middleman, it's gonna have the 114 controls here in Annex A in column A. It's gonna have any low-level controls you selected in column B, and then any FISMA requirements here in this column here. And then what we do is if we just we just drop it into Excel, and then it gives us all the detail here. And then let's go down to here. Well, it's actually got some detail in it. <coughs> so here you can see here. So well, let's go here under access control. It's got some controls in here. Can we? There we go. This just does one one control at a time, so it have multiple. Annex A references here, but so we're in 8.3.1 right here. Here's the control we selected. Here's the FISMA requirement, okay? And that's how we use Annex A. I can show you a little bit different one where we can do, um, let's do all low level controls here. Okay, and then we gotta get down to one here that's got multiple ones here. So you can see here now we can do Annex A, the <coughs> control you selected, this is below Annex A now that maps up to Annex A, Annex A to GRC requirements, cloud security, NIST, COBIT, FedRAMP, FISMA, GDPR, payment card industry, SANS, FedRAMP low. And you can also add, obviously, contractual requirements become very important too. So if you have the Microsoft contract or or whatever it might be, you would also want to map those to Annex A. That's just one way to do it. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions here. If anybody has any questions about how we map that to Annex A, um, and just kind of keep it short and simple here. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much.